Welcome back to the southwest of England in a series that will reveal some of the best summer fun to be had in the counties of Devon and Cornwall. If you're just joining us, I'm Caroline and so far I've dined on a farm eating the best of Devon's seasonal veg and explored both the National Trust's Castle Drogo and Finch Foundry just up the road. Sticking with the National Trust's theme, in today's video I'll be undertaking a four kilometre hike, if you can call it that, through the stunning Lydeford Gorge on the western edge of Dartmoor National Park. If during the video you find yourself enjoying it, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel so that you can join me in my Devon and Cornwall adventures. This afternoon I've come along to the National Trust's Lydeford Gorge. It's a beautiful gorge with a river running through the middle of it and there's waterfalls and there's supposed to be some wildlife, maybe potentially some bird spotting so I know that there are some bird hides along the way. We have arrived at lunchtime so we did actually make a quick pit stop at the tea room where I had a cheese, tomato and red onion toasty which was actually a lot more impressive than what I was expecting for it to be just to give me a little bit of energy to help me get along this trail but I'm quite excited to go and check it out. One thing that's probably worth mentioning, the Devil's Cauldron unfortunately is shut off at the moment just due to works being done to the trail but I believe that a lot of the other things, especially the White Lady Waterfall which I'm really looking forward to seeing, that is open. I'll be the first to admit we didn't really make it very far around the gorge walk before I saw a completely empty children's playground. Now for those of you who might be quite new to the channel you may not be aware but I am actually a full-time secondary school teacher so usually when I get to go away it's when all of the kids are also away and there was one of those zip lining things that just brought back memories of my childhood so couldn't help but just go and have a quick ride on it but we are now back into the gorge and actually doing the walk that we we're supposed to do. They currently have a one-way system in place so we're being forced out along the top of the gorge so we're not actually down by the river although we can hear it ebbs slightly just down there. Even just walking across the top part up here at the moment it's been very pretty, loads and loads of ferns and it's just kind of been a little bit undulating so we've gone down at some parts, up at some parts, it's been really pretty bridges to cross over. Every now and again we've got to a part where there's been a cascading stream coming off of this hillside to my left. There have been a lot more though, but they're quite dry at the moment in July and we were saying I bet if we would come after heavy rainfall, say in the autumn, it would be absolutely stunning and especially with the changing of the leaves colours in here, I bet autumn is a spectacular time to come. But I am quite eager for this path to start going downwards because I definitely want to get down into the gorge down by the river. made it now into the base of the gorge and walking along the river we've come across this and there's a sign quite close by explaining it's a mine shaft and it was mined for copper either back in the very late 1700s or the early 1800s. That said though they have found mechanical drill marks quite close to the entrance which gives some indication that it might have actually been used as recently as the Second World War. Unfortunately, we're not able to go in there, in part because obviously you've got the grill in front of it, but it's because there's bits of rock that are prone to dropping off, which obviously could cause injury. And what's quite cool is because humans aren't constantly going in there anymore, lots of bats live in there, and they go in there to hibernate during winter as well. On to the White Lady Waterfall. It is really quite busy here. Quite a few people have got along to these like picnic rugs, and I think they've been here for a few hours. 
particularly young children just paddling away in the water. It was quite amusing when we first had the photo here on kids say to the mum, Mum, can I go all the way in the water? Which mum rather horrified. It's like, no, please only paddle. But I think this might be called the White Lady Waterfall because it looks a little bit like a bridal veil. So the white bridal veil covering a lady's face when she gets married. I don't know if that's actually the case, but that's probably why it was called that. It's rather pretty and it's really quite nice and shaded down here. It's a nice bit of respite to the lovely walk. center they were checking out like everyone's shoes to make sure that they weren't wearing things like sandals and flip-flops and they were saying that some parts get really sketchy and I've got a feeling that this is one of the parts which I think is why they've probably got this metal handrail so that you can grab onto it because I imagine when it's rained this is probably very very slippery and naturally with quite a drop off on the other side it could probably do some harm <laughs> My researcher told me that if you come late September into early October, particularly after heavy rainfall, that this river is somewhere where you're able to find things like brown river trout and potentially even salmon and they try and jump up the waterfalls. Even though it's very late July, we have actually been able to find some fish in this pool just behind me. I'm not too sure what kind of fish they are and we don't actually have any phone signal in here to be able to Google it. So if anyone really knows their wild fish, it'd be great if you could leave a comment and let me know. Are we right to think that these might be brown river salmon? One of the things that the National Trust has done in here is they've put out posts that let us know which direction to go in to get to an emergency phone and I guess that's because they know that there isn't any kind of phone signal down here in case there is an emergency. The National Trust, I think they really know what they're doing when it comes to their one-way systems. The way out was pretty, but the way back has just gotten better and better every hundred meters or so after we left that white lady waterfall. It feels like almost now we're about to enter into a cave and the temperature has really, really dropped. Everything is just laced in moss and the roaring of the river, the roaring of the stream and the fish. And we're going through odd tunnels here and there. This place is just spectacular. this section even in the height of summer when all of the other parts are dry the rocks are quite wet and slippery at this point I think it's this part of the walk that I've seen pictures of where when there have been heavy rains the water is right up at the same height as this bit of the path just come out of the really narrow gorge and it's flattened out and the rivers become really really placid it's reminding me of exactly what this reminds me of and we did that hike 
in Bethula, it's in Snowdonia National Park, and it started off going through a thundering gorge, really, really similar to that one. And I remember when it came out to the really placid part of the river, and then we had to cross over a train line. It's all just coming back to me. If you really, really like gorges and you're interested, I'll put a link to the Beth Gillette video up there so that you can just click on it to watch it next. And we've made it back to the car park at the National Trust Slideford Gorge after having done the three hour walk, although for us it ended up being a bit more like four hours, but having taken our time to shoot video footage, take photographs, and also just kind of chill a little bit at the waterfall, it's probably why it did take the extra hour. It was a fantastic walk, not necessarily a super varied walk, but there was just so much to see and take in. It was wonderful. If you're not a National Trust member, then adults pay £8.50 and children, I think, £4.25. But if you do like what we do, we've got an annual joint membership, which cost us £120 for the year. And then that just gives us access to these places completely for free once that's been paid up front. I've talked about it before. I'd highly recommend if you live in the UK or you're going to be here for a, a longer period of time, I'd, I'd highly recommend getting a National Trust membership but this has been an absolute treat and definitely something that I would recommend.